A new film, The Cave, documents the work of Syrian doctor Amani Balur as she manages an underground hospital in Ghouta outside Damascus during the war. Emmy Award-winning Ferris Fire directed the film, which follows Dr. Balur dealing with daily bombings and the ongoing threat of chemical attack. Ahari Srinivasan sat down with him to discuss the cave and his own traumatic experience of being kidnapped and imprisoned in Syria. And, of course, his story reflects the incredible harshness that he had to endure. So you start with seven different hospitals. You're getting footage from all these different places. How did you settle on this hospital and this, the one character that I want to ask you about, uh, Dr. Amani? She's the first woman leading, what, a staff of 140 people in this underground hospital. How did you settle on this? When we start, when we continue shooting, um, we I find out there is something special with Dr. Amani because I kept talking to her and find out like she's she have a very very special um, way of leading the hospital and we, and then I figure out that she's the first woman to lead a hospital in history of Syria, but she was also helping the woman to work in the hospital. She built a rule of equality. She built a an, an space for this woman to find their identity, and this is what the culture doing. What Dr. Amani doing, it's really rare, but it's brave in different level. And she is doing this in a culture that's been very chauvinistic and sexist. There's a clip of that in the film I wanna, I wanna show. <laughs> يعني <تصفيق> أنا ما نقص ما نقص نقص شغلي نقص الخدمات اللي بوجود دولة مديرة للمشفى لا لا بس ما عاوز طيب شوف الإدارة الإدارة هي ما بتنجح بس بشخص يعني مو إنه بتجيب شخص بتقول بتصير إدارة منيحة بتجيب شخص لا رح لك سؤالي نحن نحن كأطباء يا أخي لقينا إنه إذا انتخبنا دكتورة أماني إدارة المشفى بتمشي منيح طيب وانتخبناها ونجحت وعدنا انتخابها مرة ثانية طيب بنقول له لا انت خيارك خطا، هي لازم تروح تقعد بالبيت، انا ما بشوف هذا الموقف. بس ما في حاجة في مصر الاداري حتى هلا انا 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 well, actually, this is one of the challenging in the films because I want to focus on the, the female work of the female in, in, in Syria. I want to make a case study also for the, the woman in the, in the war, not as a victim, but also as an active doing something, change something as a heroine subject. Uh, the, uh, the cinematographer was mm, all the time um, advised me like to go to film with, uh, with a male and their camera all the time moving from the female to the male. And then when I see the footage, I, I surprise. I say like I want to follow those specific subject because it's not gonna work. I want this. If you, you can't do it, just tell me I can't do it. I said, but <clears throat> for them it was like tell me like no, it's easier. We can have access. We can go there and and we can walk out with him and we can do this. So you kept telling them no, yes. no, no. I, I don't want more shots of this exactly. guy. I need more uh, her. She's, exactly. the, she's and, the character. Uh, yeah, and and I I told them, <clears throat> don't do anything. Just sit down and let the camera observe it. You will get a powerful, great footage. Don't do anything. So you don't need like to move around. You just like f fit the camera on her, on her face and move, uh, move like a little bit away mm -hmm. and you can capture a lot of things. And this footage start to come out and then themselves start to change. They start to see her, it's powerful and start to recognize. The cinematographer's changed. Yes. They start to recognize that she's a powerful person in front of them. She's great, and what she's doing that they never noticed it before. They start to notice it through the camera, but also what the camera did actually it built the respect around Dr. Amani. This, the society around here that start to focus on her and see her like something important. Partly and because the camera was because there. Because the camera on, on there. That what the power of the of 
the, the, the power of the change that the cinema can do in, in the right moment. And then I start to see there's no better than, than this story to tell because herself, Dr. Amani, moving, she's a political figure. Mm. Everything, what she do, every single movement, it's a story. And they need the people to think because this is film is a culture film. If we put the camera inside the hospital, the documentation of the, war, the Russian warplane bombing the hospital, it's enough to, to, make, a, to make a powerful story. Mm. But alongside, there is a deeper, deeper level. It's about the change in political and social level that the society need to see it as a mirror in front of them. There's a clip that we're going to play of her just dealing with some of the smallest victims and the patients that come in here. Uh, she talks to a, a young woman. <laughs> شو هذا اللي حاططي على ايدك؟ حلمي فيني حط مثله انا؟ ليكي ايدك طالعه احلى من ايدي. اللي حطي ايديك على اذانك وقت القصف، انا هيك بعمل احيانا مشان ما اخاف. ايه شو بيشتغل بابا؟ ما بيشتغل، ابي ما له خلنا يشتغل. وينه؟ مات الله يرحمه. كيف مات؟ مات بالقصف تفجير سيارات صار له زمان بتحبي لبابا؟ اي زعلتي لما مات ما؟ يكون بمكان احسن صح؟ There's a scene right after that where she even has this conversation with that young girl about what's important to you, what what could you I mean it, it you know, I don't know if the girl is going to remember that conversation later in her life, but it might have been the first time she ever had a conversation that saw the possibility of becoming a doctor or a teacher as an outlet for her. This girl doesn't have the never opportunity to speak about her dream and about herself. When she she felt somebody talk, talking to her, she she relieved. She felt that she had the first opportunities to talk. Let's talk a little bit about this hospital. I mean, we see... <laughs> We see a surgeon who's operating without anesthesia, and he plays music for people off of his cell phone to try to keep them calm. Describe the conditions that this hospital is operating under. This is hospital. They doesn't have any kind of um, um, uh, medicine. They start to work on the medicine in their hand, and um, uh, and sometimes because the number of the people that coming that uh, victims coming to the hospital on injuries or the um, uh, to coming to the hospital is higher than the, the the what they have the capacity the capacity of that they have so they start to use different ways like to make the 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 patients like feeling that they are more comfortable. Like Dr. Salim, he tried to use different method, and he's the person who loved to, to use the music. And the music was like make the people comfortable. Actually, those people didn't listen to music before. The victims, they coming from this area, they don't listen to the music and the, the classic music. Something they didn't experience when they start to experience this, start to experience their body, touch their body. This is when the change that make this. During the filming of this, uh, we witness the repercussions of a chemical attack. And this is something that the Assad regime, the Russians, all deny. And yet, here you are, your cinematographers are documenting people who are coming in. There's a moment where the nurse says, um, I don't understand, that they, they, they all look healthy, but they're dying. And then it starts to dawn on people and everybody else is like, let's put masks on, et cetera. What was that process like? I can't explain the chemical attack in, in this idea. If you bring, if you are in a small room and you bring 20 gallons of chlorine and throw it, the smell of the, the current smell, it's five or six times from that. The chemical attack that used as Dr. Amani and Dr. Salim explained because we don't, we don't know how, what the, the, the chemical attack is, what, what the material is there. She said like it's the smell of the chlorine, but there is mixed with the other chemical materials. So one of the condition of Dr. Amani was, when we film, we should not stop her from doing what she do, but also we should not touch the victims because they don't know what kind of the weapon using of, 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 of the victims. And we try from 20 hours of documentation for the, the chemical attacks, me and my two editors, to find a way like to make the people 
watch it and see who the victim of the chemical attacks. What does what what does need to uh, using the chemical attack in anywhere? I'm trying to put the people also in the position to understand if they are fathers, mothers, or brothers, or citizen for any country to understand what how much this is dangerous. Uh, and we have the, all our uh, the responsibility about this, and nobody react about this. The, unfortunately, we need a real reaction because using the chemical attack, the big threat for our 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 world, it's something cross the lines for any any international law. You know, the the New York Times show that there are still very specific bombings happening of hospitals. Um, even though some of these hospitals were on a list of places that the UN had put out saying these are places not to be targeted, they actually went down that list and targeted three or four hospitals at the same time. A lot of media being investigative of this. Me, my, with my team, we documented more than, more than 500 hours, around 1,000 hours of documentations of the inside the hospital. Our camera never moved outside of the hospitals. Seven hospitals being attacked intentionally. We documented that the UN visited the, the cave, and after the visiting of the UN, the number of the, the bomb in Christ on the hospitals. This is so scary, and put a lot of question about the responsibility of the humanitarians, uh, uh, humanitarians organization that visiting the visiting the hospital and the responsibility to protect the hospital. And this is big question: what the role of the UN now? What they have to do right now? And this is in front of them, in front of the world. My country now, the hospital of my country, the lowly place for the hope, for surviving, it's being bombed every day. And I, ha and, 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 and I have to tell everyone here, everyone listening and everyone seeing, this is the death of the, every child, every person, every victim is the responsibility of every single person in this world will hear this and watch this. You've been kidnapped twice by the Syrian government. What happened to you? I was doing a documentary actually in in the beginning of the demonstration in Syria, and I try like to make a film and put what the change that the, the, this demonstration of democracy can can bring. Um, and in the middle of the documentation, I've been kidnapped the first time and They're not arrested, just taken. No, they taken. They take they kidnap me. They put my my um, my T-shirt on my face and take me. I didn't know who taking me until I arrived to. To the to uh, underground uh, um, jail, which is this is the, the underground jail. This jail it's just uh, for the intelligence services jail. In Syria, there is more than 12 branch of intelligence services. The, the number of the intelligence services branch is more than the university and the schools in mm. Syria, more than anything else. So they, they take me and they um, um, when when I when they throw me in my cell, which is like small cell, like in this chair. Uh, which is, is just, a, 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 just a toilet and dirty toilet and I have to sleep and stand there. And I've been tortured every day, every single day. They want to know why I'm filming this, what I'm doing. The filming is a crime for them. What was uh, the torture? They, they was taking my nail. They was using the electricity on my sensitive uh, part. They was hang, like hanging me, uh, hang my hand in, in the roof. Um, uh, I have to stand on my uh, finger. Uh, for uh, 24 hours without any food, they take me outside of the of the jail, of the cell, to the corridors. They have to beat us, and all they beat us like until to go like to the to toilet and back. And we see the bodies of the people that killed under torture. This is the first time. The second time they did the same things. The first time three months is the second time uh, five months, uh, uh, 15 months. Is. I've been jailed two times, 18 months, is just because I was doing a film in Syria. So how did you get out? Uh, the UN, they have um, uh, some lawyers in the UN, they have the names of the journalists and the f a filmmaker and an artist being jailed in Syria, and the number of was was very high, so they put my names and other and they released, uh, released us. And they, they kept following us because they want to capture us again. And this is the reason I left the country. So you're now working on films still about and in Syria, but you can't live there anymore. You can't be there anymore because the Syrian government wants you. What, what happened to Dr. Amani, the central character in the movie? Where is she now? Dr. Amani now in, in Turkey. And um, she, she practicing as a doctor? 
She's not allowed to practice, doctor. She's not allowed to work. She's not allowed to do anything. She's is sitting. She, she allowed to leave Turkey and she allowed she allowed to leave Turkey, but she's not allowed to to do any any job. She just have to sit and as a refugee that disabled to do anything. Do you know what happened to the hospital that the cave is centered around? It's taken by Russians. The the area all the area is being controlled by Russian uh, by Russian militaries now. Is it still functioning as a hospital? No, the no? hospital is stopped from functioning. They they captured uh, one of the, our doctor that been filmed in the in the in the movie. We remove a lot of footage for him because he's safely and he's uh, now in the uh, in the Syrian regime prison. And they taped two uh, two nurses told them that what we did is a fake news. It was no, they 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 make this um, normally the, the Syrian regime do something called the fake news on from start from uh, the beginning of uh, the uh, the revolution in Syria, they capture the people who have different opinion from the government and the bottom of the of front of the camera force them to say something different and they did uh, capture two of our nurses and told them like th what we did it's it's fake news. There were people in the hospital while we're watching all these bombings, we're happy that our central character is still alive, but there were, what, nurses killed, ambulance driver, who were they? During the shooting in this movie, we have lost four, um, four medical uh, worker, one ambulance driver, two nurses, and one of uh, assistant of Dr. Amani, his managing, uh, one of the management team. Um, what do you hope people get from this? What they will see now, it's still happening there, and they hope they can write a letter for their representative here in the U.S. and told them Syria need, uh, need an action, direct action, to protect the civilians' places, to protect the civilians. And other things, to be this film a testimony on crime against the humanity. Once they, when the, the, the criminals to not uh, run from what they done. This film will follow them forever, will keep a testimony on their crimes. And this is could use as a, like a testimony on, 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 on one of this court that, uh, that could bring those criminal to the court. This is what I wish. I'm not gonna let those people who torture the people and kill the people that to tell their, their lies. We're telling the truth that the truth will come, come out because it's obvious, but we need to put it in front of the people in the right way. The documentary is called The Cave for us. Fayad, thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for giving me the space to share this story.